Some background information on this property in central Pennsylvania. Uh, like many others in the Ridge and Valley region, it's what we'd consider mixed hardwoods. So we do have all of the oaks, white oak, chestnut, red and black. We've got a lot of sweet birch, there's poplar, we have gum, red maple and hickories pretty much comprise most of this. We do have some white pine and we did have a nice grove of hemlock, but that pretty much vanished about 15 years ago with the woolly adelgid. Uh, it wasn't too long ago, I'd say about five years ago, we had a pretty good die off of chestnut oak trees. And I would say 60 to 70% of our chestnut oaks did not make it through the summer. So we had a logger come in while pulling off uh, those chestnut oaks, trying to at least get some dollars off of uh, those dying trees. He also pulled some high quality or higher quality oak trees in the process. So it's what I would, I would consider a high grade harvest, taking the highest dollar trees. Then after harvest, the dominant tree species was definitely birch and also red maple. What followed was an invasive explosion. Stilt grass, a non-native annual grass that when introduced to an area, I've noticed can quickly consume a woodlot and severely limit hardwood regeneration. It only took three years before I saw more than 50 acres of this property covered in stilt grass. Wherever stilt grass wasn't present, it was the hay scented fern that would prevent any new seedling growth. If it wasn't the fern or the stilt grass, then it was a striped maple that quickly took over and shaded the forest floor. For a lot of hunters, including myself, when you take a walk in the fall or winter, you really don't notice the impacts the stilt grass and the fern and the striped maple can have. Here is a view of the property in October. Variety of color, there's an understory of trees, which by the way is all striped maple. It doesn't seem all that bad. Now in terms of hardwood forest regeneration and wildlife habitat, I would consider it poor quality. I've learned the best way to observe a property and the forest floor is to take a walk in the summertime. This is when I witnessed the negative impacts of these three plant species that we're having in our property. There was basically no new hardwood generation, not even the pioneer species, of the red maple or sweet birch. And really my best advice is to go to the Penn State College of Ag, look for the PA Forest Web Seminar Center. These webinars are such a valuable tool for Pennsylvania private forest owners. And that's what really allowed me to recognize the problem with our property and also how to properly manage it. So I'm basically taking the information of the Penn State Forest webinars and applying it to our private land over the next couple of years. Now the task of controlling these invasive species can seem daunting to almost impossible when you're talking about 80 to even 100 acres. A couple of things. There are companies that focus on controlling invasives through mechanical spraying. Now it can be expensive and I would recommend contacting your local district DCNR forester for more information or you can tackle the project on your own, which is what I am doing. Now it does take time and a lot of sweat, but I do wanna prove that it can be done. Coming up in my next video, I'm gonna show you the equipment that I used, uh, anywhere from the sprayer to the herbicides used, and really what is the best time of the year to really tackle the stilt grass and the fern and also the striped maple.